Hello and welcome to another edition of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast. I'm Captain Rick Riles. Hey, we're going to have a lot of fun this afternoon. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a quick stop in Nosara, Costa Rica to check in with my buddy Craig Sutton. Got to get the latest Marlin report from him. Then we're coming back to Florida and we're going to dissect the whole state. We'll start up in the northeast corner with Captain David Borries, work our way down through the Keys, up through the west coast, and out through the Panhandle. It's going to be a lot of fun, so sit back and enjoy. Let's start it out with another quick trip to Nassara, Costa Rica. You know you want to talk all things Nassara. There's only one man to talk with, Captain Craig Sutton. Craig, how are you? I'm good, Ricky. Good, good. good. How about you, buddy? Well, I'm I'm good, but we're getting closer to prime season in Costa Rica. Tell me how the fishing was this week. We had a little hiccup on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. It got real slow for some reason. Huh. I don't really know why, but then it just on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and yesterday it just lit up like a Christmas tree. How I about mean, that? It really did. Yeah, multiple marlin. Uh, had the shots at a couple more. We missed, um, you know, some sailfish and nice yellowfin. And none of the giant mahi like a couple weeks ago and three weeks ago, but a few good ones, but a few smaller ones too. You know, we, but, you know, still good fishing. No big yellowfin, though. A lot of 30, 40. You know, a couple of them look like it might be 50. Mm, I don't think 55, but nice fish, but no giant. Does your sail do your sailfish seem to still be a little bit substandard? Yes. Yep. Yeah, they've been they've been substandard all year. They really have. And I don't know about it. You know, we I think we talked about it last week. I know when I was down there at the end of May, there were some two hundreds mixed in the schools we were working all three days I fished. But the yeah, the forties and fifties were beating them to the bait. I mean they literally the bait was you know, was out for you know, 20, 30 seconds, but, you know, there was one caught and there was a couple hooked up, but, you know, we didn't get one, but, mm. you know, I think they're there, but the, the forties are just ravenous right now. Oh, well, that ain't a bad thing. Us old men can handle a 40 where we might not get do a 200 right now. That's for darn sure. All right, Craig, yeah. that's an awfully good but, report. Now your sailfish, you say are still substandard, huh? They've been substandard all year. I they wonder really why. Isn't that too. strange? I, I don't know. It's just so much other stuff has been so good. I just, I wonder if it's maybe the other fish are beating them to the hooks. But, you know, we're getting, they're consistent. They're just, they're not consistent big numbers. Mm, I got you. Okay. All right, Craig, you will please tell me we can check with you next week. Look forward to it, brother man. You, you got it, buddy. Craig Sutton from Nasara. Costa Rica fishing Nasara.com is the best way to get a hold of him. Craig's reporting, of course, all of our action spotters are brought to you each and every week by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. By Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum. Oh, it's the best chum on earth, all right. By Nasara Paradise Rentals, your dream billfish destination. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. By Young Boats, you want the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids? You need to check out youngboats.com. By the Castaway Hat Company, the hats that help and save our seas. And last but not least, our newest sponsor, Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Time to hit Florida. Let's start up in the northeast corner with one Captain David Borries. David, how we doing? Hey, Ricky, I'm doing great, buddy. Doing great. Good, good deal. How was your fishing this week? Well, you know, I talked on the radio show uh, the other day, and I was talking about it being sort of on a roller coaster, you know? And when you say that, you sort of mean up and down, up and down, up and down, but what I should have clarified is some days are better than others. Sure. And, and you know, it, it, it's all been good fishing. The, the fishing has been really on fire lately. Uh, some days you're going to get much better uh, uh, fish, and then other days you might get a bunch of small fish. Uh, but this week the fishing, for the most part, has been very good. Uh, the shrimp are still active, still flushing out of the creeks. There's plenty of shrimp everywhere you go everything's feeding on them now one thing we've seen this past week is an influx of 
very small redfish. Now these are redfish that were spawned in in la, end of last year, uh, September October of last year. Now usually when they fish spawn, they fought, spawn out in the river, out in the the the, the uh, inlets and stuff like that. So a lot of these little fish will stay in the deeper part along the river. But when we get these early shrimp hatches like we have going on now, they will move up into the intercoastal and start spreading out and feeding on these shrimp because it's such a good source of protein. And there's not a day that's gone by this week where we haven't caught at least 15 to 20, and I'm talking six, seven, eight inch redfish. Oh, good They're deal. Good deal. Everywhere. And it is good. I think it's a great thing, Rick. I mean, it's good to see that. And guys are actually, I've, I've, I ran into guys and they're like, where are these fish coming from? Where, you know, I've never, don't ever remember seeing these fish. So I want to see what happens in, in two years when these fish become, you know, good slot fish, uh, how that, so how that group of fish that we're seeing now, what they're going to look like in two more years. Certainly sounds uh, exciting. Yes. Trout bite's been really good this week. We've seen some good sized trout. It's been a couple, you know, uh, I caught a few this week over the 20 inch mark. And a lot of these fish are still pretty much rowed up. In other words, they're full of eggs. They're spawning on these new moons and these full moons. Uh, so, you know, this is a good time to release those big trouts and let them go do what they're good at doing. And that's spawning. Oh, Flounder fantastic. are absolutely everywhere. I mean, there has not been a day this week that we've caught no less than seven to eight flounders. Now, this is coming from a guy that is targeting redfish. I don't, I'm not out there targeting flounder. Flounder is pretty much a bycatch for me, but we're catching seven to eight of them a day. Now, out of that seven or eight, Rick, only a handful of them are really keepers. Um, so, with that being said, we're seeing probably one of the best flounder bites we've seen in years. Even though they're small, I'm hoping in the next couple of years we're going to see some really good flounder in this area again like we used to see. David, here's my feeling on flounder real quickly. Most years I use my dock as a reference point. In the spring, we will get flounder on every major weather change. If, if we get yep. a good blow out of the east, we'll get a fresh batch. We'll catch those, and then it's real quiet for days at a time. We get another change in the weather, and here comes a new fresh batch. This spring, on into right now, when there is normally very few flounder, David has been very consistent. It's been every day. I haven't gone a day without catching a flounder off my dock, and it's just it's so refreshing to see. I hesitate to think that it's become as, because of the new limits that we only passed last year. But for whatever reason, we're on the upswing. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I That's like fantastic. your attitude, David. I sure do. I think you're right. Let's talk about it next week, if that's okay. Absolutely, Ricky. Thank you, David. Captain David Borges sure. from Northeast Florida. Now let's head down to East Central. But before we do, let's hear a word from Academy Sports. You know, today's new outdoorsmen have so many advantages over us old guys. I can only imagine how much easier it would have been to learn to fish and hunt if we had had an academy back in the day. Well, get ready, Panama City, because your outdoor experience is about to get a whole lot better. That's because Academy Sports is on the way. Hey, they'll assemble the, your grill. They'll assemble your bike. They'll have the right gun. They'll bore sight it in for you. They'll spool your line. They'll exchange your propane, and they'll do it all at Academy's best price guarantee. The store is coming in late July, but until then, you can shop online at academy.com or through Academy's mobile app. That's where you can sign up for all the digital ads and offers you need to enhance your outdoor experience. Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Time to hit East Central. That means the man in charge is one Jim Ross. Jimmy, how are you? Doing great, Rick. How are you doing today? Good. How was your fishing this week? Weather seemed pretty good. Yeah, um, we did have a little bit of wind over the weekend. It kind of made everything a little bumpy, but the guys in the bigger boats still got out, and the guys in the smaller boats just kind of chugged along 
you know, they made it, they made it out to some of the near shore reefs and stuff. My son actually got out and had a really, really good uh, catch and release day on red snapper, had some clients that just wanted to pull on something big and they got red snap to 27 pounds. So I would say that's pretty darn good. Yeah, pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Um, also the snook bite at the inlets is going, uh, really strong right now. Uh, king mackerel bite has been hit or miss. Uh, the ones that were in front of Canaveral and working their way up to Ponce, uh, it looks like they're from Ponce North now. Uh, with the exception of one lost fish, one 40 pound king mackerel that decided it was going to swim in Ponce Inlet, take the left and head towards New Smyrna. No. Go past the North River Bridge and swam all the way down to the South River Bridge, the 44, Highway 44 Bridge, the South Bridge, and somebody caught one there, on caught him there on a live mullet. I'll be darned. Now, how far is it from the mouth of the uh, ocean, or the mouth of the river, the ocean inlet, if you will, to the South Bridge where he got caught? I'm going to say it's two and a half miles. <laughs> That's fantastic. What a great yeah. story. That is fantastic. It would, it would be like catching one at Browns Bay, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. I'll be darned. Any word so You the... never know. You know, no, you, might you, have to no, start you running, don't. You might have to start running wire stinger rigs when you're fishing at the South Bridge in New Smyrna. Who knows? They, uh, I got to tell you, Jim, that's the reason why we're so hooked on what we're hooked on. I mean, that that's just it. You know, we just, you never know. I mean, you just don't know. You never know. Yep, yep, that's absolutely right. Um, What did you hear from offshore, way off? Did you hear anything about about Mahi or Giselfish? Scattered scattered dolphin, uh, not much else. Okay. Uh, uh, You know, just really, really slow on the troll. It's, It's interesting, Rick, because to the south of us, it seems like the dolphin bite has been pretty good. And to the north of us, it seems like it's been pretty good. But for some reason, they are just not sticking around right here. They're just either passing through or we're just not fishing for them when they're coming. I don't know what's going on. Um, the guys that are still running to the east side of the stream and getting the yellowfin tuna and blackfin tuna are, are coming across some dolphin over there. But on this side of the stream, overall, it's been a pretty slow year. We've never really had that good push of fish come through that we expect to see in April and May and then kind of extend, you know, normally into the first week of June or so, uh, second week of June. We just haven't seen that. It's just been kind of a, a slow, steady pick, you know, the whole season so far. Jim, I can tell you uh, fishing offshore St. Augustine like I do in the spring, um, the season that was supposed to start April 1st and run until Father's Day started May 1st and ended June 1st. Now, it was a pretty good month. It was a fine month. I won't lie to you about that. But, boy, we did not get anywhere near the time out of the run of fish that we normally do. They were on up to North Carolina just as fast as they went blowing through St. Augustine, I can tell you. All right, I want to play a little, play a little yes, no, or maybe with you. Okay? Okay. Okay. You've been around your offshore fishery a long time. Here's what I want to know. All right. Here's a statement for you. Sharks are on a natural upswing. It's just a cycle, and they won't be any bigger problem taking our fish away in 20 years than they are right now. Uh, given the given that there's no changes in the laws or anything of that, just everything is state status quo. Right. I'm going to say no. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm on your that, side. I'm going to say way. that I'm going to say that they're a little bit out of balance, and in fact, in some places, they're a lot out of balance. Heck, a 40 pound kingfish trying to hide from the sharks <laughs> that are out on the reef by going to the South Bridge. <laughs> that's, that's proof positive, that, right? I, that I mean, might, how can we? <laughs> that that might be the exact. That might be the perfect explanation. You're exactly right, Jimmy. Thanks now, so much. Please tell right, me. Buddy, please care. tell me we can check with you next week. I look forward to it. Okay, thanks again, Captain Jim Ross. Man, what a thrill this is for me tonight. As much as we have all enjoyed Captain Alan Sherman's podcast over the last couple of years, Alan has a standing date with his wife, Dana, on Sunday night, and uh, can't make the recording of the podcast. So Alan is going to re- be replaced by none other than the legendary Captain of the Miss Brit, one Ray Rocher. Captain Ray, how you doing? I'm good. I don't know if I can fill those shoes. But yes, I'll, you I'll can. Try. 
I tell you what, I'd, I'd rather fish with you than just about anybody I know. Ray, tell me well, about your fishing this week. How was it? Uh, it's been a good week. Uh, dolphin are show up, showing up in decent numbers. I mean, you know, on a Saturday morning, it's tough to compete with all the boats. But we fished today, yellowtails in the morning, caught them, had them, you know, up on the surface. And then uh, tile fish bit good and then went offshore once all the boats were gone. I didn't see another boat after like two o'clock today and and uh we found a big school of gaffers and heavy Ooh. lifters and you know caught about 15 fish and we're we're headed to the cleaning table so oh. it's been a it's been a good week yesterday we kite fished we tile fished um we trolled and you know everything it's not a whole lot of anything but enough of 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 a variety of fish to you know get the box dirty and put some smiles on faces uh, generally speaking, Ray, those dolphin are a little late. Do you usually have as good a dolphin fishing in late June as you're having now, or are you having a pretty it's, good season? Today was one of the better schools I've seen in a long time. It was, you know, one big patch of weed on the, what we, we go by numbers here off Miami. It's all North South. So when we talk about how far offshore, we talk about our longitude. Mm-hmm. And, uh, today was the 57 line. Yesterday was the 58 line. And, that's distance off the reef. So it's, that's only about 10 miles offshore and found giant. I went through several weed lines. That's probably one of the biggest things for people to remember is that, you know, you find the, the westernmost weed line and you kind of assess dolphin fishing based on that. That may not be accurate. You know, you might need to go, you know, through another couple of lines to get far enough offshore to find the quality fish. And that was the case today. I went, I went through three weed lines that were beautiful, you know, big patches and just could see in my binoculars another line further off. And I went out there, and the first big patch I came to had, you know, a big bunch of fish on it up to several in the 15-pound range and a bunch of fives and tens. And it was just great. We just sight fished and put the boat in a circle and had the fish inside our circle for about 20, 30 minutes and just had a great time with light tackle. So, you know, that's the thing to remember this time of year. Some, sometimes you got to go a little further than the rest of the boat. That's fantastic. What a great report. Hey, Ray, we're going to play a little game. You haven't played it before. We do it pretty often. It's called Yes, No, or Maybe, where I make a statement that's bothering me, something that's going on offshore, and uh, you you tell me what you think. Okay. Uh, all right. The sharks uh, that are taking our fish from us, it's a yep. natural cycle. Uh, they'll, they'll peak, and then they'll go into a valley. We won't have very many. And 15 to 20 years from now, We'll be losing the same number of fish we are right now to sharks. Yes, no, or maybe? Uh, definitely no. Okay. It, the, this is a result of under-harvest from long lining. Uh, the, the United States has one of the greenest long line fleets in the world, if not the greenest, meaning mandatory circle hooks, closed zones, observers. Not many countries have that. And they've gone down, from what I understand, talking to a few of the shark long liners that, that, that long lined in the past, from in the 20, roughly low 20s to about one or two authorized boats. Oh, wow. And when in, the, in the South Atlantic region, which is the north end of North Carolina to the, to the western end of Key West, and meaning not in the Gulf. So the Atlantic side from North Carolina to Key West. And when you go from 20-something boats to one or two, um, there's some experimental gear they're playing with and so on. Um, you know, you're going to have an overabundance. It's, it's much like what we saw with the Goliath groupers. And I, and I get it that there's times where you say the population's low and we need to rebuild them, but we've exceeded that num- number of fish, in my opinion. And never in my life have I had a sailfish eaten until uh, last year. We had three eat in two days, you know, just, and I've, I can't even tell you how many endless stories I've heard of, you know, an unnatural amount of fish being eaten by sharks. And I'm not talking about just in South Florida, even all the way up to the to the canyons in New England, Gulf of Mexico, the Carolinas. One one of the charter groups there kind of keeps track, you know, monitoring different Oregon Inlet, Pirates Cove, Hatteras, et cetera. How many fish were lost in your fleet to sharks today? And it would sometimes exceed a hundred tunas. So when you see that kind of activity, it it shows, you know, an excessive number. I'm not saying kill all the sharks. I had a long talk with Guy Harvey not long ago about it. And he's a very, very big proponent of, of shark conservation. And I get that. And I understand the need for that. But it's not that 
every species of shark is is causing this problem. It's bulls and sandbars. Mm-hmm. And after a long conversation with the guy, he, he understood a lot more than he did when we started about the need for harvesting those fish, utilizing the meat, not just thinning sharks. We don't do that in the United States. That's, no. that's prohibited. And once he understood that it wasn't hammerheads and black tips and silkies and duskies, then he was a lot more comfortable with the idea of harvesting more. So I, you know, I hope that that happens in the future and I'm not, you know, I'm not in charge of this movement, but I just see in my lifetime an overabundance and, you know, they're good to eat. I, a lot of people didn't know this and, and guy didn't know it. You know, we, we take a bull shark, core them, take the bloodline out of the, the inside of the body cavity next to the spine and brine them. And when you clean that fish, it's actually very good to eat. And a lot of people don't understand that sandbars and bulls are good to eat. So once people kind of understand what it takes to clean them properly and, and brine them, get them cold, uh, you know, maybe there'll be a little more interest in harvesting those fish and that will only balance out the numbers. So I'm not against sharks and I, and I know they have their place in the ecosystem, but there's certainly been an imbalance. What a how well said, Ray. Thank you so much. And please tell me we can check in with you next week. Absolutely. I sure look forward to it. Congratulations on your good day. Hope it stays good all week. It's time to hit the keys. But before we go, let's get a word from Shimano. I'm not sure who first coined the phrase, the only thing saltwater can't destroy is saltwater. You know what that meant to the engineers at Shimano, don't you? That sounded like a challenge, and their response is now on the shelves of Strike Zone Fishing. The new spinning reels are called Twin Power, and they feature the Infinity Drive. That means there's not a fish around they can't stop. A hot wahoo or tuna can run as fast as they want the heat sink drag can handle it and you never have to worry about your drag heating up even better the new twin powers are built to become the best reels ever at fighting saltwater intrusion listen everybody's had the problems with seeing the latest and greatest actually on the shelves of your local tackle shop in the last year well i'm here to tell you that shimano's partnership with strike zone means that you can always count on finding the latest and greatest lining the shelves of both strike zone locations our thanks to captain ray rocher for a great miami report i hope those mahi have found their way as far south as ala Mirada. how about it captain bean storing you seen any mahi down there there's some down here yeah yeah it's not like they're swarming you know uh but it's definitely still worth to go look for them um just yeah just like another slow mahi here you yeah, know? yeah, but yeah. they're still here. They're here. Uh, they're just, uh, they're, you're not just, you know, you got to find a set or pick a couple off here and there off a weed line at a time, not swarming, but they're here. Okay. Okay. We'll take that enough to enough to stink up the pan. Anyway, that's worth it. All right. What else have yeah. you seen this week? Uh, there's been some really good black fin tuna out there. Um, you know, if you go at the right time and you know, you got enough bait, um, also, uh, the sea trout have been biting really good. Um, huh. The snooks have been biting good. Um, mangrove snappers are spawning on the edge of the reef now. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. Like, you know, if you spend some time doing that, then go look for mahi. Um, so there's still plenty to catch. There's also been some uh, tarpon uh, a little bit further in the back country. Uh, you can find some packs of tarpon and get lucky on those. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's still uh, plenty to catch down here in the four fishing capital of the world. Bean, it seems to me like statewide almost, and I talk to you guys every week, this has been a better year for mangrove snapper than we've seen in a while. Am, am I right, or is it just North Florida? You know what? Uh, it seems like you, no matter what, you can never do a dent on mangrove snappers. You know what I mean? Uh, you're always plentiful. I had a better year, I think, last year than this year, uh, but I feel like I did more of it last year than this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, no, there's been a lot of good quality fish around. I like your attitude. You can never put a dent in mangrove snapper. Thanks. You can't. That's a, <laughs> that's a great report, Bean. Thanks so much for it. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Absolutely. Captain Brandon Bean Storen out of Bud and Mary's in Alamorada.
You know what Yamaha outboards love? The genuine formula and consistency of Yamalu marine engine oils. Plug, 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 plug. Outboards are subjected to punishing conditions like high loads, salt, and humidity, a mix that automotive oils can't handle. Yamalu full synthetic and marine performance formulas are certified to protect against friction and corrosion for reliable performance every time. Ah. Find Yamalu marine oils at your nearest Yamaha outboard dealer. Locate them at yamahaoutboards.com backslash dealers. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Hey, Raj, you know, being consistent is a mark of a quality product. If you've been Florida's number one chum for over 10 years, there's got to be a reason. For 10 years, Tournament Master Chum has lived up to his name. That's why more tournament pros insist on Tournament Master than any other chum. It's the only chum with Menhaden milk mixed right in. That means it gets a scent out faster and deeper than any other brand of chum. It comes in a grind size for every species from kingfish to catch and bait. Your fishing time is way too precious to use second-rate chum. Bring the action to you by insisting on Tournament Master Chum. It's worth every penny. When you're ready for the finest in custom-made flat spay or inshore-offshore hybrids, you are ready to meet the Young family in Inglis, Florida. For over 21 years, the Young family has built custom boats one at a time for every type of fishing. Nothing can sneak up on a flat quite like the Gulf Shore flats boats, and I've never fished a better hybrid than the Young 24s and 27s. Rob Young is a naval architect who takes tremendous pride in each and every build for each and every customer that wants their boat custom-built exactly the way they want want it is it time for you to move up are you ready to own the finest boat built then you need to visit the young boat facility in english florida or check them out online at youngboats.com let's head out west to the Ten Thousand islands that's where captain steve Dahl resides cap how we doing we're doing good how are you rick good good hey let me ask you something i would think that in the 10,000 Islands, now I haven't fished that area, so I'm talking out of school here, but I would think yep. it's rare for you to get pressured by too many boats. Is that true? You know, I, relative to other places in Florida, that is indeed the case. You know, we've certainly seen, you know, the surrounding areas get developed a lot. You know, it used to be just Marco Island um, in a small town or a small fishing town called Goodwin, Florida. And then there was nothing from there all the way to Chuck you uh-huh. know, that, that's about it. And so what's happened though is on, uh, we've seen develop far or a lot more development further, uh, east, um, from Naples. So, um, as such, you know, you know, they call it progress or what, what have you, uh, we're definitely seeing a lot more fishing pressure than we have had, but you know, it's not uncommon for us to leave the dock, um, you're not going to see any development, the balance of the day, which is very nice and pretty rare uh, throughout Florida. Um, and you might see half a dozen boats, you know, throughout the day. And it's a good shot half of those might be charter boats. So Sweet. Rel- relative to other areas, I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You obviously haven't fished out of Jacksonville on a pretty Saturday exactly. afternoon. So how was your fishing this week? You know, it's been slow. You know, I think what we're doing now is, you know, really fighting those water temperatures. You know, we talked a little bit about that last week, and we're trying to leave some of those backcountry fish alone just because we're seeing uh, water temps pushing 90 degrees. You know, the um, even the Gulf of Mexico is in the mid-80s right now down by us. So it's uh, definitely brewing for a big storm season, I can tell you that. Man, <laughs> if those water don't tell me that. Continue to... I know, that's my fear, but... Uh, as such, you know, the nearshore bites kind of been the reliable bite. There's something for everybody out there from Spanish mackerel, barracudas, kingfish. We're still see, even seeing some kings, which is nice. Um, you know, those are all up on the top, you know, top part of the water column. Um, if you got some kids or novice anglers out, you know, definitely we're getting some calm winds too, which is really nice. And you can literally fight fish big barracudas and uh, schools of Spanish mackerel are just about everywhere. So that's, you know, kind of on the plus if you're looking for action and trying to entertain some folks, you know, a little bit farther down in the water column or, you know, kind of that, uh, you know, just below those fish, we're starting, you know, we still have the permit going on. We still have some decent cobia. Um, some of those bigger fish are kind of gone. You know, I think it's just a little too warm for them. And then, uh, our bottom fishing is still pretty decent. So, that's kind of what we've been doing, you know, albeit we don't have a lot of 
wind. You know, we're fishermen. We complain when there's wind. We complain when there's not. Yeah, that's and, right. That's you right. You know, and, and uh, it's just really hot. So, I mean, you really got to, you know, I'm doing pre-dawn, you know, launches and, you know, getting out at first light on our first spot. And, you know, that seems to really, really help, you know, getting off the water by 11, 12 o'clock before those, before that heat really kicks in. And then, you know, obviously the thunderstorms that come with it, you know, a little bit later in the afternoon. So um, I think if you can kind of commit to that type of pattern until we get a little bit of relief, you know, um, I think you'll do pretty good. Not to say those backcountry fish aren't there. The trout are pretty, it's just far too warm for them. They're obviously a little bit more cooler water fish, but the snook and reds are still there. I just heat a little caution with the water temps, you know, being as high as they are. I just hate putting stress on fish like that. And um, if I can get out to those, you know, wrecks and reefs, you know, three to five miles from shore, you know, that's a little bit different type of fishing for a lot of people too. So kind of breaks up the uh, true backcountry monotony. So that's kind of what I've been up to this past Steve, I, I, I don't think, I think you're being too hard on us. I, I think as fishermen, uh, we're perfectly, we're not demanding at all. We want wind. We would, uh, we want it between 7.4 and 9.1 knots <laughs> at all you're times. Right. Okay. From the, from the desired direction. That's exactly <laughs> That's right. right. Uh, we're not being unrealistic or anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for a great <laughs> report, brother. We look forward to talking to you next week. Oh, I can't wait. Hope I got a little bit better action for you. Thanks, buddy. Captain Steve Dahl. It is time to start up the West Coast, and that means it's Craig Stamper time. Snooky, how are you? I'm doing very well, Rick. How about you? Doing okay, buddy. Doing okay. All right. My my sailfish have not cooperated uh, much at all lately. Tell me about down there. Is fishing better? Well, you know, we had a little weird scenario last week for, for me in the back bay not being able to catch redfish when I needed those for my backcountry slam. And this week, they came back. I found them. They're happy. So wherever they were, they came back in the neighborhood. And we still have a lot of snook on our beaches. And, of course, a trout. You can catch a trout if you need to. The cool part is the last two, three days, we had really good morning tide. We get good moving water around here, Rick. We catch some nice fish. So this morning... We had a hell of a day. I got to be honest with you, it's going three for six on juvenile tarpon is an awesome morning for us. It and, is. Um, it doesn't happen often like that, but we had that golden hour and a half, an hour and a half today. And it was really, really something to see. Now, moving into the inshore guys and near shore stuff, we've had a lot of sharks. They've had some issues with the permit being eaten by sharks, uh, especially big hammerheads. That's because those tarpon are still around. And they're going to be around for a couple more months now. The good part is the tarpon are spreading out a little bit more. They've started to move probably way further north. They're off in the panhandle now. It's hot. And we'll see that fall migration in about two months when they all move back down here full speed. But you can still catch your tarpon if you want to. I'll be darned. That's crazy. Now, what was the bait of choice on the juveniles this morning? So I had two or three different types of baits we used today. The two baits that worked best were small pinfish that were about two inches, eh, give or take, in that ballpark. The nice part about that is when I cork them, they really make a lot of noise, Rick, and they pull that cork around. So mm -hmm. it's pretty obvious when they get taken. And then I had some pretty good white baits that I picked through. I kind of hand-picked them after I caught them uh, the day before. And uh, so they were in that three-inch range as well, and those also got eaten. And then we tried some other stuff that didn't work as good. We threw some shrimp out just to see what would happen. But, you know, if you use anything from a pinfish to a whitebait to a mahara, you're probably going to be in good shape. Got it. Outstanding report. Outstanding. All right, Greg, we appreciate it as always. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Absolutely. Talk to you then, Rick. All right, cool. Tight lines, Cap. Our thanks to Greg Stamper for a great Southwest report. I want to know what's going on in West Central, and I know who knows. That would be one <laughs> Captain Ray Markham. Raymond, how we doing? Fantastic. A little overcast and a little bit rainy right now, but I think fish like this. It's a, a welcome change from the heat. Yeah, you know, uh, Steve Dahl, a uh, few reports before, was saying – Fishermen are never happy. We're happy when the wind blows. We're unhappy. We're unhappy when it blows. Unhappy when it does. But you know, I don't think that's true. I think we're good with the wind. We just need it to blow seven point two to nine point one knots out of the desired direction all the time, right? We're not over demanding. That sounds good to me. I like Sounds it. good to me. I like it. Tell me about your fishing this week. 
Actually, we had a really good week this week. Um, it, it was steady. I can't say we set the world on fire, but there were plenty of fish caught, good variety of fish. And one thing that I saw that I haven't seen in about a year and a half, and that's uh, flounder. Good. Um, not only on the inshore uh, end of it, and it, the fish were undersized just barely, but with a new 14-inch uh, minimum. Um, but the guys that were fishing offshore were hammering some big ones, um, pound and a half to two and a half pounds. So, uh, they're, they're working the wrecks just offshore, some of the artificial reefs. So, uh, maybe that's previews of coming attraction for inshore guys too. So, uh, I'm looking forward to that because I, I sure do miss my flounder. <laughs> I got, I got to tell you, Ray, it is a banner season on the East coast. While I am wow. sitting in my little office doing this, my entire Sunday school class is inside my house just devouring flounder sliders. <laughs> we are catching them this year better. We're catching them this year better than I've seen them in 10 or 15 years, I'm sure. Don't... So how do I get in your class? <laughs> <laughs> Come on up. We would love to have you. Have you heard anything from offshore? Um, you know, they're catching a few kingfish, believe it or not. And I, I figured by now, uh, with this heat and everything, they really wouldn't do much of anything with it. But the guys that are doing it, they're really not targeting kingfish. They're um, they're trolling plugs for blackfin tuna, mm -hmm. and they're picking some up. So, you know, it's it's kind of a bycatch deal, but you know, it, it, nobody's complaining. Hey, give me and, their uh, give me their go tos on trolling plugs for blackfin tuna. Yeah, you know. I can't remember all of the names. I know some of the guys are trolling mirror lures. I know uh, the Rapala, Rapala X Raps. Right. Um, there's a Nomad that, that they find has really, really been a killer killer plug. And that's pretty much what I'm hearing. Now, mm -hmm. me personally, I, I don't get that far to, out that far to do any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I kind of target it during the spring and the fall when, when they're on the beaches. So. Mm -hmm. um that's that's all i get to see <laughs> but we had real good snook action this week uh a variety of stuff i mean just the bluefish um we had some trout we had uh, a lot of snook um but yet nobody complained now, everything was good good now is it common for you to have bluefish around july 1st well Yes and no. I mean, okay. it, it's such a weird fishery. It's not something I would go out and target, uh, nor I do I think I could. But I, I think when I fish uh, depths ranging anywhere from 6 to 10 feet, um, I could catch some bluefish. Now, mm. we we get plenty of bait down by the skyway, and uh, especially when they get uh, glass minnows working in there. Between the ladyfish and, and uh, a few Spanish mackerel, and the bluefish, uh, everybody gets a rod bent and uh, uh, some drags that are making some noise. So it's all good for them. <laughs> gotcha. Ray, thanks for a great report. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Yes, sir. I sure hope we do. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it. Captain Ray Markham okay. from the West Central. You know what the theme has been this week? Kingfish. We're still catching kingfish all up and down the coast. Let's check and see how it is up in the Big Bend with the mayor of Homosassa himself, William Tony. Mr. Mayor, call the meeting to order, please. Well, meeting to order, you know, we're sitting here. The closest thing I could tell you here on the Big Bend, I know we get kingfish, but we get the smaller version of Spanish mackerel. Actually, have been pretty good inshore up off the spoil banks for Crystal River. So, you know, if you're interested in some uh, Spanish mackerel, you know, great eating fresh, or if you like to make fish dip or smoke them, that area off of the Barge Canal and those intake canals in Crist River to the old Florida Power Plant, now by Duke Energy, is the place to be. And in fact, the other day, I was out in a spot off of Homosassa, and we had, uh, there were Benito mixed in with the mackerel and bluefish and jacks. It was a pretty cool bite, actually, for our area. That, that is a cool bite, and I, I feel compelled to ask you, have you ever made a Spanish mackerel salad the same way you make a tuna salad? I have not. Uh -uh. The only way uh -uh. I've, I've uh -uh. used to, I, so just got to just, you know, poach them up and yep. you make a salad, or yep. what's the deal? Yep, poach them up, 
uh, you know, get them good and, good and torn apart and treat them just like tuna fish. If you're going to make a tuna salad, do everything the same, sweet relish, onions, you know, mayo, the whole nine yard. Little, I put a little liquid smoke in mine. Oh, yeah. Son, it'll make you want to leave right. home now. I'm not kidding. You know, you know what I'm going to do tomorrow now? I'm going to get me a Spanish mackerel. <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to try it. All right? I want right. you to try it. Well, that's it. That's a great report. It's not like you had a great bite. Uh, well, William, are your are your are your trout starting to show a lot of signs of the heat? Yes, they they've actually moved offshore, and uh, you know I I had a couple good days last week where I limited out because of the wind, and what I'm finding my trout at is near deeper water. So you can either go one or two spots. I always tell people if you run offshore off a of number two uh, until it looks like a matchstick. And deep jig out there, you'll catch some trout. The other areas are deep channels and the flats adjacent to them, so they got a place to get down and hunker down during the heat of the day. But the other thing here in our area that's fixing to take care of the heat of the day is opening up this coming Friday, July 1st, as people could get in and start getting the scallops. Oh, yeah. Hello. Come on. <laughs> so, you know, that's what, you know, so to tell everybody the truth out there, you know, I talk to a lot of people. I talk to our shrimpers. And sometimes they'll get them in their nets. But right now, the shrimpers, because our water was up to 91 degrees last week, are having to work a little bit deeper oh, offshore. Man. So so they're offshore, so they said they haven't seen higher hair of any. Now, I've had two sources. My sister, Captain Erica Tony, had went out diving around looking, and she said she did pretty good. Now, these aren't secret spots, but anywhere off of the bird rack west of St. Martin's Keys, she said she got about 30 and 15 minutes. Sweet. Now I talked to another, so I talked, I talked to another prominent captain who went out and he said he hit all the hot spots. I got three all day. Mm. So, you know, so I can't tell you, you know, she is my sister. So I don't know. I kind of, you know, grew up with her. So I trust her pretty good. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, but what, what I can tell you right now is looking at your tides coming up for the opening day of scallop season, are going to be really good because we're going to have lows during the mid part of the day. And I always tell people for scalloping, you'd like to have low tide during the mid part of the day. That way the sun's at the highest, the water depth is at its shallowest. And that's going to be coming up on Friday. And the good thing, the water is very warm and no signs of jellyfish. So, you know, just got to get in and got to go find them. Well, we've got to clear something up right now. Are you or are you not the mayor of Homosassa? Because if you're the mayor of Homosassa, I fully expect you to close the scallop season until July 19th when I bring my grandkids over to scallop. Well, I already, I got my private section being the mayor of Homosassa <laughs> that I only invite very good friends of the man named uh, Captain Rick Riles that are only allowed to go there. So so that area is off limits to everyone else. So, you know, they'll know if they get near it. It's, it's a, it's a warning shot at first, but it can get serious <laughs> later. I like it. <laughs> William, thanks for, thanks for a great report. Please tell me we can check with you next week. I'll be here next week, but it will not be downtown Homosassa. I'll be on vacation. So I'm going to be up in your neck of the woods at Crescent beach. How about that? How about that? Yeah, I look man. forward to that. All right, We'll buddy. switch coast. We'll switch coast. I'll give your report. You give mine. You got it. Thanks, William. <laughs> Cap William, right. William Tony. Hey, before we start out west, let's get a word from the Castaway Hat Company. You know, I'll bet you don't even remember the days all of us cool kids would rub baby oil mixed with iodine to help us get even darker in the summertime. Being burnt was cool. And even if you weren't a surfing god, oh, you sure looked the part. Man, have a lot of us paid the price for our vanity. We never knew the skin problems and health damage that awaited us. Today's fishermen have the option of being so much healthier in the sun than we ever thought of, thanks in no small part to the Castaway Hat Company, which not only provides our podcasters with Castaway Straw Hats, but they make the coolest prints on the underside of the brims you ever saw. Now, you may think your bimini top or T-top blocks the sun, but as an awful lot of SOGs can tell you, you can't have enough protection from sun damage. So do what we do. 
put on the sunblock, and put on your castaway straw hat. You'll look the part of today's best anglers, and you'll even be helping the environment. For each castaway hat sold, the castaway company's going to pay to have a pound of trash removed from our waterways. The burning, floating sun won't be wasting your skin. And believe me, when you age a few years, you'll thank us, OGs, with a lifetime on the water. So get to the castawayhatco.com and get your best sun protection today. Castaway Hat Company, a hat for every adventure. Now moved into the northwest section. That's where we're going to find Kevin Lanier, the king of all red snapper. Is that true, Kevin? <laughs> uh, Captain Rick, I appreciate the compliment. I wouldn't go that far, but we do okay. How was your week? <clears throat> it was great. Um, once we got out of the full moon cycle and the bike picked back up again, uh, we had a really good week. Uh, <clears throat> we got a number of fish uh, over 20 pounds. Um, the Kings really showed up starting a couple of days ago. We've gotten a uh, uh, King between 30 and 40 pounds every day. So that's been really exciting. That is exciting. I got to tell you, that's been the theme of this week, Kevin. Kingfish bit everywhere, including get this over in uh, East Central in the uh, Melbourne area. Uh, a gentleman caught a 40 point something pound kingfish uh, right near the southern bridge in the intercoastal near the space coast, two and a half miles from the ocean. Oh my gosh. It was, uh, it was flounder yeah. fishing with a live mullet. <laughs> oh, that's pretty amazing. At, I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever heard of one that far from the ocean before. I've, I've seen them quite a ways, but not that far. That that's really something. Uh, snapper and grouper staying steady. Yeah, snapper. Um, snapper's been steady as can be every day. Uh, we're pretty much putting a lemon on the boat. Uh, the uh, mangrove snapper, they're picking back up again. Uh, the bee liners are big. Uh, really, nothing negative to say at all. Uh, coming out of that full moon cycle. We have found over the last few years that, that the snapper bite gets a little tentative and they're grabbing the baits but not eating them. So we'll reel them halfway up and they'll let go. Um, so, mm. uh, but we've had a good time. I mean, customers are, um, you know, this 100 degree uh, spat of weather we had didn't help us any, but everything was good. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like an outstanding report. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Hey, we'll be back next week. More red snapper going uh, as we get into the 4th of July week, and uh, we're looking forward to it. You got it. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin Lanier from Northwest Florida. Oh, my gosh, it's been fun, but we only got one more stop. Let's check the Alabama border and call Captain Tyler Massey. Tyler, how are you? I'm doing good, Rick. How are you guys? Good, good. Tell me about your fishing now. Are you snapper fishing yet? Yeah, we've been snapper fishing every day still, and, you know, all of our inshore, our, our nearshore boats, offshore boats, everyone's catching red snappers right now. Uh, fishing's been a little slower than normal. Huh. Um, you know, we've had some super high water temps. Um, mm -hmm. Could be something to do with it. Um, you know, it, it's just it's kind of abnormal for us this time of year. Usually later in the season it gets a little slower, but, um, you know, the, the guys are having to work a little harder for them for sure. But, I mean, still plenty of fish, plenty of nice fish to be caught. You just got to be a little more technical. Mm-hmm. I got you. All right. Are you hearing anything from the blue water yet? Any trollers? Yeah. So, um, you know, I made a trip out to the uh, pads I talk about sometimes. Right. Uh, made it out there this last week. Um, you know, we, we caught plenty of mahi mahi, uh, in the five to maybe eight pound range. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some other guys had some wahoo bites trolling. Uh, a couple of billfish were caught there the last few days too. So I'm definitely picking up on the, uh, on, on the offshore trolling stuff. The, the pads are a good place to focus for sure. Oh, that's outstanding. That's a great report. I would assume with the hot water, your inshore is probably pretty slow right now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, daytime uh, trout fishing, red fishing, um, it's been a little slower. Um, you know, like I always say, this time of year, it's, it's best, I say, to go at nighttime. If you can, if you can get out there and, and fish some dock lights and some bridge lights and that kind of stuff, you can do really well fishing with a, a free line shrimp or, you know, a free line croaker or something like that, and you can definitely pick off some nice fish in the lights. Uh, easier on your on your body too in, in the nighttime versus that that hundred degree weather we've been having. Nighttime's the right time this time of year, Cap. Thank you so much, Tyler. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Yeah, Rick, we'll be here. Okay, you got it, Captain Tyler Massey from out in the West Panhandle, just before you get to Alabama.
Hey, that wraps our trip around the state tonight, and it was a lot of fun, and we learned a lot. I'm surprised to hear of the number of kingfish scattered all around the state. They're catching them in Ala Mirada, catching them up in Jacksonville. The West Coast has got plenty. Looks like our kingfish numbers are good, and that's a real good thing because there's still plenty more tournaments to be fished this year. How about Jim Ross talking about a 40-pound kingfish, two and a half miles up the inlet, up the uh, inland waterway. That's that's pretty unheard of. You don't hear that often. Everybody's happy with mangrove snapper. The mangrove snapper are good all over the state. Captain Brandon Storen says you can't put a dent in mangrove snapper. I don't want to try it. We don't need to find out about that. But the red snapper are all over the Gulf of Mexico, and everybody's limiting out. That's great to see. Sure would nice be nice to see some of that on the East Coast. I hope you enjoyed our trip around the state this evening. It was brought to you each this week and every week by Yamaha reliability starts here by Shimano bringing people and nature together by tournament master chum it's the best chum on earth all right by Nosara paradise rentals your dream vacation by DOA lures it's the unfair advantage by young boats you want the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids you want youngboats.com by the castaway hat company the hat that's helping save our seas and by academy sports and outdoors right stuff low price every day. Hey, until next week, I'm Captain Rick Riles, and we will see you on the rip. <laughs>